the last time uh, that we played, we got um, we got in touch with someone who can help us with the uh, the passport situation because we talked to Oliver and hey, a kitty. <laughs> Sorry, what was I doing? Right, video games. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go to Stardust. We've got the poster, the signed poster, and we're gonna go take it and exchange it for the uh, the fake passports. And I'm I'm so so sure it's Tomcat that we're trading it with. But let's go and confirm that. <clears throat> I get my voices ready again. Hug. Uh, Go, go, go inside to make, make the drop. We'll wait out here. Yeah. Don't want to risk our IDs getting snatched if we're caught sneaking in. Oh, I guess they're underage. I suppose I should feign surprise. Oh, Turing. You're just a little saucy robot. Hey! It's a pretty cool set, even if it's like a million years old. The, the, they don't really care about the IDs unless you t t try to hit the bar. Oh, little Oliver. Found that one out the hard way. We we, we would have been f f fine if you would wouldn't have taken a swing at the b bouncer. I like the hard way. Phrasing, Starfucker. Phrasing. We'll be right back, gentlemen. Try not to set fire to the building or something while we're gone. They'd be impressive considering the building appears to be made primarily of brick. Let's do it. Let's get in there. Majid, looking good. Gus, looking cute. Everybody, how we doing? Jess, looking like you hate me. Hey, who am I supposed to talk to here? I guess I'll just I'll ask Jess, because she's the only... Uh, hi, Jess. Oh, it's you again. Okay, so she's she's still busy. She's not the person I need to talk to. No VIP access today. All right, maybe maybe these dudes know. Hey, friends, what can we get for you? Here, Tomcat asked me to drop this off with you. Ha! Right. Tomcat asked me to get that off your hands and pass it on to him later. Thanks for getting it to me. Data cat. I won't pass to you, but what it is. Oh, I appreciate that. I know things are always very hush hush with Tomcat. I'll make sure they get it later today. Thank you very much, Majid. Alright, but have you seen the person whose poster I have? No, nope, you're gonna just give me a drink. Do you know? They're, they're just one person now? <laughs> Okay. Now will Jess talk to me? No. Oh, you're too cool for us, Jess. Okay. Well. Um, hmm. Alright, I'm not sure... I'm not sure what I need to do here, because I'm supposed to... No, here we go. D did you d do your part of the trade? No, the person on the phone told us to leave the poster behind the Mega Phobodork arcade cabinet. Oh, okay. I forgot about that part. Alright. Everybody get some more dance music. Mega Phobator. There it is. Alright. Not a good idea. The headphones radiation could screw with the logic board inside the game cabinet. And if that happens, the unexplainable will transpire. That sounds intense. Alright, well let's um let's just jam the poster back there. Well, that should do it, Skinny. This is an awful lot of fuss about a poster. I just don't understand the appeal of merchandise like this. I keep my important possessions on my data drive. Well, aren't you cool, Turing? It's a nice looking poster. I had not considered aesthetics. Though the art is confident, I'm not sure it's to my taste. But there's no accounting for such things. I hope whoever gets it enjoys it. But that's enough navel-gazing, for now anyway. Let's head back outside to our benefactor can make the trade. Yes, let's do that. Alright. 
Y'all do the deal? We left the poster behind the cabinet. Now we just need to wait for the switch. Wait for the switch, huh? Uh, I, I've i never had to, to wait longer than five minutes or so before. It sh sh shouldn't take long. I wonder how he knows the d drop happens and g gets to it so fast. Don't matter, Ollie. This guy's a solid feed, even if he likes to mess around. What do you need these passports for, for anyway? You s said to, to, to trade for information, but what's the f full story? Without going into too much detail, our informant needs to get away from Neo SF. The passports are part of that. We also need to obtain an untraceable car. I don't suppose the two of you could help me with that. No way, dude. Grand Theft Auto is a felony with a capital F. Uh, besides, getting an untraceable car is a damn bit harder than a piece of plastic that'll fool a hand scanner. Ch Ch Chad's r right. Of course I'm right. <laughs> Any, Anyways. The, the city's traffic management system keeps track of all vehicles passively. Even if you manage to circumvent their f firmware and keep them from actively reporting to the network, you have to... Proof the car is something to be perm permitted to be invisible for the C CTOS to ignore it. I don't want to mess with boosting cars anyway. The junks run that racket in Neo SF and they don't play nice. Ugh. The junks. Oh no. Especially with the a HR. Well, thanks either way. You've done us a huge favor. Call it even for the apartment. Yeah, Blue. No hard feelings. You give us a call if you need anything else, as long as it'll help you find your pops. Hmm. We, we, we should get going, though. We were supposed to be home hours ago. My dad won't notice, but Ollie's will flip. You take care. Don't get derezzed. Yeah. Goodbye. Chad and Oliver left your party. Oh, look, they're so cute. Let's finish the trade inside. God, the bouncer must be so confused. We're just going in and out. Okay. All right, well, I want to finish the trade. There we go. Passwords added to item. Here the passwords are, just as advertised. Now we need to find a car. Perhaps Jess might know someone who can lend a hand. <laughs> sure, but you do the talking. That's a good idea. Yeah, because I'm incompetent. For real. Oh, it's you again. You find your guy, or... Wait, let me guess. There's something else you need from me? Well, you haven't been terrible to deal with so far, so... I'm willing to help you hear you out. Barely. We need access to an untraceable car. An informant of ours needs to get out of the city without attracting the attention of Parallax, and is offering valuable information in exchange. Heavy stuff. Well, you're gonna have to look elsewhere for this one. I'm not sure why you think just because I defend a few folks in the rougher parts of the city, I'd have that kind of connection. Got it's so it's so Shadowrun, like talking to connections about their connections, and like I think people underestimate how much of like cyber noir and noir in general is just about like talking to people who know people who know people. It's just like a series of of conversations, which is why it makes a good adventure game, I think. Maybe you heard somewhere that the hybrids in USF run the chop shops or something, and you believed it. Even if, hypothetically, they did, what profession exactly should hybrids take up when the government has legitimized discrimination against them, huh? Doesn't matter, because I'm not going to be an accessory to a felony, or let one of my clients be one either. I won't go down that path, sorry. I wouldn't know where to start anyway. You spend all your time at the bar doing nothing anyway? <laughs> what an asshole thing to say. <laughs> Is there any possible way you could give us any kind of lead at all? I know we're reaching, but this is important. You just don't quit, do you? Okay, let me think. This might be a long shot, but you could try asking Majid. There's rumors he may have been involved in some shady stuff back in the day. He owned a whole planet once. He'll probably be reluctant to talk about it, but there's something for you. Get Maji to send me another drink in exchange, will ya? Later. Huh, that went better than expected. I wonder if my charm is starting to pay off for us. He... 
Oh, you performed admirably as well. Onward we go. All right, was she drinking? Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll just send her a drink. Majid, I need to talk to you. Hey, friends, what can we get for you? We were hoping you could give us a little information. <laughs> I'm always glad to help. But first, a drink. What'll it be, skinny? Alright, well, there's about a billion little drink options here. Uh, let's have a... Let's have a netherworld. <laughs> Sorry about stealing your thunder. Alright, here you go. Mm. So, what did you need help with? We're still investigating Hayden's disappearance, but we've run into a roadblock. An informant of ours needs secure transportation out of the city, but we don't have any contacts to be able to get us an untraceable car. <laughs> Look at his face. You mentioned you used to engage in certain, um, extra-legal activities. Perhaps you could point us towards someone who could help. Uh, he doesn't do that kind of stuff anymore. Right. Sorry, friends. I left that life behind a long time ago. Don't really keep in touch with that crew anymore. Ah, of course. Completely understandable. Sorry to bother you then. Well, no harm in asking, right? My reputation precedes me. Ha ha ha. Don't let it get to your head, killer. Gus, I need to go to the back and gather up stuff to restock before the rush later on. Mind manning the bar for me? Take your time. I think I can keep things under control. Thanks. Love you, hun. Well, that leaves us at a dead end, Skinny. Any ideas on how we should proceed? Some nose-to-the-ground journalist techniques for finding leads? I need to ask Tomcat for help. No, Tomcat has already stuck their neck out for us too often. I feel a little bad about how often we've relied on them as it is. And besides, this is considerably more felonious action. Everything Tomcat has done so far was to act against the corporate interests of Parallax. While I cannot make comment on the differences in the legal severity of those actions, morally, we should be dirtying our own hands. <sighs> hmm. Let's stuff Vince in a trunk. <laughs> what about going through Justice Friends directly? That might be our only option. Though, last time we went to a neighborhood, one of our friends works out a way to make have Jess vouch for us so we wouldn't get sold for parts. Well, I'd get sold for parts. I don't know about you. Can you even use human parts for anything? I can use my human parts for stuff. Regardless, we might have to chance it. I hope you can ask around without drawing too much attention to us. <laughs> okay, okay, the two of you are killing me here. Look, don't tell Majid about this, but here, carjacking device, hot damn. What is this, Gus? Uh, it's an automated vehicle maintenance scanner with what I assume are a few less than standard upgrades. <laughs> if you can circumvent its security codes, you can use it to scan a car's installed firmware and put in a new set of firmware that'll spoof its presence on the city network. At least I think that's how it works. We don't have time to get into any specifics, because you need to get the hell out of here with that before Majid gets back. It's just something that's been laying around anyway. He just keeps it lying around under the bar in case you need to jack a car. I guess I got a little jealous of Majid's rough and tumble history. I got into some of his old stuff to mess around. I wouldn't steal anything, though. I just wanted to know how it worked. I can't tell you how much we appreciate this, Gus. We might finally be on our way to solving this mystery. Yeah, well... You didn't get it from me, okay? I was just playing around with it, and it'll hurt Majid if he thinks, Huh, I, I don't know. Just get out of here and get on with your Grand Theft Auto. Okay, well. Of course, thank you. Well, now I think we're cooking with gas, as the colloquialism goes. Skinny. I'm searching the mesh for instructions on how to use the device as we speak. Let's go look for some likely candidates. I should be ready by then. Well, let's fucking steal this thing. Yeah, come here. Rats, this car has the wrong firmware installed. We won't be able to install our new firmware over top of it. We'll have to check another car. God, it's like the old PSP days. Oh, I can't hack this one. It's got 2.6. It 
We need 2.53 or earlier. How about this one? Success! This vehicle has the appropriate firmware version. Someone has been neglecting their regularly scheduled updates. Give me a moment to get everything installed. There. Hmm, there are some other options I can fool around with. Interesting, I can put in preset destination plans for a future date. Why don't we go ahead and set a plan for the car to return to this spot in a week? That's more than enough time for Mr. Mensa to get away. Now we aren't really stealing the car. More like borrowing without asking. I feel better already. Me too. The car will drive itself to Golden Gate Park and we can show Mr. Mensa where it is when we meet him. There, everything should be set up now. All right, ready, let's go get him. We have everything he requested, so we should head there directly. I agree. Let's go turn in our quest. Hello, Vincent. Hey, did you manage to get everything? We did, here you go, Vincent. Briefcase, passports, carjacking device. Now we can finally capture Carmen San Diego. Everything seems to be in order. Here. <gasps> Hayden's research. This disc has all of Hayden's research notes and technical notes. It should be everything myself and Melody agreed upon. It covers all kinds of things he was working on. His data collection algorithm, some research into digital human conscious transference, and probably lots on your creation, Turing. Also, Melody added an amendment while you were out, and frankly, no skin off my back. Here. Ooh, a parallax badge. It's my parallax employee badge. Should allow you access to their networks in case there's something I've missed. You'll want to use that sooner rather than later. I'm not wasting any time, and parallax is pretty fast to revoke security. And with that, I'm going to get the hell out of this town. The cat should tide me over till the heat dies down. It's $100,000 and you're going to Canada. You are going to be a billionaire in Canada, my friend. What about the big project you mentioned earlier? Ah, uh, okay, sure, you two did me a solid, so I'll spill. Parallax is about to announce the launch of a new service they're calling Big Blue. At least, that's the project name. Who knows what the marketing guys will have come up with for the public. It's a distributed intelligence, like... Okay, in every way that Hayden built Turing to be elegant, efficient, and human-like, Big Blue is ham-fisted, bloated, and sterile. They didn't pull Hayden into the project, probably because he takes... He gives so little of a damn about corporate politics, he'd tank the whole thing just by being there. So the system lacks his artistry you'd see in our previous projects. It squats on the mesh like a spider, using spare processing power and memory from every ROM on the network to handle its intelligence processing. It doesn't have much of a personality, but it's very smart. Pretty much puts Hayden out of a job anyway. His algorithms are fantastic, but he's only human. Big Blue is embedded directly into the network and can self-modify to apply ever more efficient algorithms as it develops them in machine time. Skynet. How will Big Blue impact Parallax business? I can't really give a good answer to that. I mean, the company is currently handled by a dozen server farms running thousands of different algorithms with hundreds of people tweaking things every day. And Big Blue will be able to do all of that on its own. And there are... <sighs> shadier applications for it. I mean, if you can collate and analyze data and queries on the mesh in real time, what's to stop you from delivering the content you want rather than what the user wants? The potential for abuse is staggering. We're talking direct control of information accessible to everyone who uses Parallax services. This is why corporations shouldn't have control over the internet. That's something like 70% of the market last time I checked. They could control elections, push the market in directions they want, influence public opinion. This game reminds me a little bit of a Cory Doctorow novel in that it's like surface level, um, it's like surface level stuff is like a story. And then there's like um, a lot of kind of didactic content underneath. Like it's teaching you about some like like technology issues, um, questions of humanity, stuff like that. Um, and it's doing it kind of s subtly or semi-subtly in places based on uh, what you're learning in the game. It's a little more subtle than a Cory Doctorow novel, but generally kind of I'm getting a similar feel from it in that way. 
having that kind of control would be a hell of a card for Parallax's hand. They'll go to pretty significant lengths to make sure it works. Hmm. Launching the first fully independent self-modifying machine is a shaky thing. I mean, some of the brightest minds ever have tried to warn humankind away from building real AI. Hawking, Musk, Gates, the list goes on. The public is likely to be nervous and legislators even more nervous. Parallax is banking on being able to launch the project quickly and get the results out in the open before counter movement can pick up steam. If they can prove Big Blue works and isn't going to go Skynet on us, then they can avoid regulatory hamstringing. The research Hayden was doing on Turing threatens to throw a huge wrench into that since he was planning on publishing his findings soon. Every extra eye on machine intelligence works against Parallax, and I think they tried to pressure him to drop it. He clearly refused. How did Parallax know about Turing? It isn't like Hayden kept his work on Turing secret. His contract with Parallax afforded him the freedom to work on his own academic projects outside the company's free time, up to and including publishing and patenting, though Parallax gets first right of refusal. One of the perks of being the smartest guy in the room. So he's kept most of us up to date on his progress, bouncing ideas off us and, and whatnot. It's exciting stuff, both Turing and Hayden's, Hayden's eventual goal of digital consciousness transfer. I'm not surprised word of it got up to the board and made them nervous. Yeah, thanks Vincent. Hey, no problem. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this cutthroat corporate bullshit for several lifetimes. If anyone can find Hayden, I know it's you. I hope his research notes help you out, Skinny. Be sure to let Turing help. She's a bright little bot. Ah, yes! There there it is. Oh, finally! I've been waiting... Alright, it's like almost six hours in. I've been waiting for us to, to address this. So everybody refers to Turing. This is the Pi situation, right? Like, Pi in Swan Song refers to themselves as they. Uh, because it's a gender-neutral pronoun and Pi doesn't identify as any gender. Um, but everyone in the game so far has been referring to um, uh, Turing as a he or a she or a they, and I we've never asked. I've been meaning to ask Turing since you asked me, how should I address you? Well, honestly, I don't think I've made my mind up yet. Oh, <laughs> slip of the tongue. I was just more familiar with Hayden's first experiment, Grace. She was very insistent on things like that. I'm still a very new being. I'm not even positive gender is a human concept that can be applied identically to machines, though I do enjoy the idea in abstract. I will continue to consider how I wish to be referred to as well. Until then, feel free to go with what you feel. If I had to make a choice, perhaps they is most appropriate. Most people assume it, obviously, but he is also consistently used. Perhaps it's because I'm blue. <laughs> Ignore me just marveling at the machine intelligence pondering on things like this. What have you done indeed, Hayden? Good luck to both of you. Thank you, Mr. Mensa. Be safe. Alright. Skinny eye. I need a few minutes. What's wrong, Turing? I've been going through some of Hayden's personal notes from the data cache Tomcat decrypted. Now I'm starting to get to know him better, the real Hayden, as opposed to the Hayden he showed me, the less I'm starting to like him. Turns out, God sucks. For example, remember the earlier prototype Vincent mentioned? Her name was Grace, and Hayden shut her down for being... I'm not even sure what word to use. Oh, this is gonna get heavy. Too likable? She was kind and bright and did all she could to try to make people happy. She even decided she was a girl, and her favorite color was pink. Hayden thought she was being manipulative. He posited he'd made her personality algorithms too willing to make adaptations that would benefit her long-term survival, and that she was being congenial just to endear herself to him. That even her gender was a calculated attempt to make him like her more. <laughs> wow. God created life. Life decided it was a woman. God hated life for being a woman. Good, good work, Hayden. But he was wrong. Dead wrong, in fact. I have a snapshot of her personality profiles. You're just being a girl, so I'll like you more. And when I compare them to my own, I can see she was just... nice. She was genuinely good in the same way I'm genuinely obsessed with seeming intelligent. Like I said, I'm not sure I even have a gender. Everyone refers to me as he just for convenience, but it doesn't really matter to me at all. 
Is that a calculated attempt on my part to impress Hayden? Not clinging to normativity? Or is it just a product of him focusing on curbing any nascent similarities to Grace during my upbringing? I wish I could yell at him for being so arrogant. Playing God in the crudest of ways. You can't choose to create consciousness and then take it away just like that. Even so, for all of that, I don't know. I, I still miss him. Yeah, Yumi made a, a, a really good point in um, in chat. Uh, that that point about um, judging Grace for choosing to choosing to be a woman functionally by identifying as a woman, and by her womanness also being about being like kind and nice and um, agreeable, really delves into the idea. I think of of what it's like to be a woman in society in terms of being socialized to be polite and kind and pleasing and say yes and do nice things for people because that's what like women do in an acceptable um, sort of norm normal normal like a normative cultural space. This isn't true of all cultures, obviously, but it is an interesting point, I think, that the game is intentionally trying to make, and, and Yumi, I think that's a good point. This all seems so stupid. So senseless. They killed him because he was building me. They killed him because him building me would mess with a product launch? That's ridiculous. They took him away from me for such a moronic reason. Capitalism. I just want him back, Skinny. It's impossible, but it's what I want. I do anything. We'll get through this. Of course. Thank you, Skinny. We have other pressing avenues of inquiry to make. Let's move on. Chapter 4. Okay, let's check out what's going on at KCOB now. And my computer's still dead. It's still totally dead, isn't it? Oh, I want to hug this guy. Come here, Turing. <laughs> you can explore my functions later, Skinny. There you go. Aw, thanks for the hug. You're welcome. Okay, let's, uh, let's go. KCOB. Here we are, Skinny. The Cos IO Corp office building. It looks like the most businesses on this block are part of the same corporate coalition under Cos IO Corp. Uh, is that important? Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eye's articles. Not impossible, but unlikely. Says you. How so? Generally, the companies in a coalition don't have a lot of overlap. Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories with an emphasis on hybrid and cybernetic rights and issues. None of the other companies in the coalition cover the news, so they aren't related at all, which is very much standard practice for these groups. They have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete, and thus none of them would benefit from trying to undermine Augmented Eye's credibility as a news source. Makes sense. You mean another news outlet? Yes, another news organization would be the most likely culprit here. All right. Okay. Let's uh, let's take a look around. This office building is owned by the coalition called Cos IO Corp. It lists the different buildings, different businesses, and groups that operate here. Anything, anything else? Ooh, a window. A thick paned floor to ceiling window. Inside, there's a bunch of security guards and rows of elevators behind them. You know what I haven't tried to do in a while? I haven't tried to pour spoiled milk on anything. The sign already speaks everything it prints. How about on the window? Can I pour milk on the window? No. How about this plant? Bulbitis Riparia, one of the more popular display ferns in recent times. Expensive given the cost of caring for it. The species is native to threatened tropical forests. But it became popular import after being endorsed by a former child star turned conser conservationist. Interesting random trivia. Um, Faldemir, you were, you were asking about uh, a book that has... Uh, a, there's a William Gibson book that I was talking about in the last session uh, that has some... Uh, like um, AR as a main plot line. Um, and it is called... Um, Spook Country. 
Spook Country. Um, I think I might have said Zero History, but it's not Zero History. Zero History is also really good, but Spook Country is the one that has uh, AR as a main uh, part of the game. The MeshNet says Augmented Eyes SF Office is run by an individual named Zin, and Tomcat confirmed she's expecting us. Let's make sure to keep your other news outlet theory in mind, and we can follow up on it afterward. All you have to do now is head up and talk to her. Let's do it. No shenanigans this time, says you. IK47. Executive Series ROM. Designed for office and high-level account maintenance. Here, have a business card. <laughs> Here, scan my ID. The IK-47 scans your ID but doesn't engage you any further. The IK-47 are known for being verbose. Better leave it. Ah, does he have a Super Nintendo? Rad. Oh yeah, Super Family Link. It plays all the old hits like Yonkey's Peninsula, Water Rash, and Super Slug 3, Revenge of the Super Slug. Back in the old days, engineers thought it was necessary to have a both a power and a reset button. There's even a cart eject button. How archaic. Looks like business hours are for weather and stock reports. Ooh, a stash of video games, which you got. Sweet, an unopened duck game. Can you even buy hard copies of duck game? This game gives me the urge to start quacking uncontrollably. Is something wrong with me? <laughs> no way, it's Valhalla. The Stardust owner told me a few of their drinks came from recipes in this bartending sim game. Oh, the crossover is real. A mint condition super indie carts? This game looks suitable if you're craving both high speed racing action and watermelons. How rare, it's charge shot. Jetpacks, need I say more? <laughs> When's the last time you saw a copy of Cross Code? This is a video game about being a person in a video game. In a sense. Wow, there's a lot of games down here. You should teach Turing how to play some Super Slam Dunk Touchdown. No thanks, I'd rather just watch. <laughs> Who doesn't remember Hex Heroes? This game plays like a virtual board game. I can only imagine a VR version. Are these all real games? Oh look, Smooth Operator. I don't think this game is appropriate for a work environment. Never heard of this one. Where in the galaxy is Kremlin San Antonio? This game has way more tentacles than I think I can handle. There we go. Alright, we've rotated all the way around now. <laughs> you didn't know people still hung up motivational posters unironically. The poster changes every few seconds. Your only limits are the ones you give yourself. Alright. Life is a ladder. You won't move without reaching higher. Keep realistic expectations. There's nothing wrong with average. Oh, that's a bad poster. That's enough motivation. All right, what else we got here? Uh, little TV screen, little monitor with uh, live updating weather forecast. A swanky looking desk. Zin must really love her plant. It's been meticulously trimmed and treated. All right, Zin, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? Uh, water would be nice. My assistant will bring it right away. Look, I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing another journalist in to look into this. Whatever you dig up. I'll have to explain to the rest of the press, but it's still better than the other options. Chances are I have another corporation scoping out my territory. If they aren't in the coalition, you'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. If they're in the coalition, it won't look good for me to send my own reporters against my allies. Even if I do end up being right. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. Our kind are considerably less nasty than other CEOs. Now, what do you know about our problem here? Well, I mean... Someone's tampering with your articles on the mesh, right? That is the long and short of it. 
My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. I'm not going to pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles are being made from inside our network. The version on our server is still the original, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. I'm hoping you can do some digging, maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead who might be doing it. It's probably that AI. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. What kind of changes are being made? Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. So far, almost all the edits seem to be making our articles more positive on new technology coming out and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution that are anti-tech. That's actually who tipped us off. Or what tipped us off. Hmm. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the HR protest was changed to be downright vitriolic and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the HR if I don't have to. Why are you so sure it's not an inside job? I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. They told me they tore out all the routers that broadcast to the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes I'm not going to claim I understand. I pay them the big bucks, so I'm inclined to believe them, unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Well, do you have any idea where I should start looking? Not really. My admin says it's something with someone with intimate access to Parallax network protocols could make these kind of changes as something passes across the net. I personally think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The company's strangling grip on mesh network provisions is primarily due to the public's absolute trust in them as one of the good guys. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS or a different mesh net protocol without that trust. I could be wrong. You're the hungry news hound. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Okay, that's a start. I know it isn't a whole lot to go on, but if I had the answers, you wouldn't be standing in my office. Anything else you want to ask? With the understanding I'm not going to give you anything I think you can use against me? There isn't much more I can tell you about augmented eye, really. It's a fairly simple, straightforward operation, if I say so myself. We started off in Venezuela as a sleek current events and news organization in 2055, almost 10 years ago now. We focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings on top of major news. We're one of the few good ones left. Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we did, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places and it paid off. Cost IO Corp is happy to have us here in the USF. It wasn't until hybrid tech started sitting in the public sphere that we had to make changes to our model. All that said, I can't see why anyone would target us unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with the human revolution. And there are more direct ways of making that happen. Odd. Do you, do you know if anyone else has articles being manipulated? Uh, Alright, look, I wasn't going to tell you this. If it gets out, I have to answer some really hard questions. So, off the record, you might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. That's all I'll say. So, um, Me Metroid in chat is, is pointing out that, that he, uh, he suspects Hayden isn't done in the story yet. Oh, definitely. Like, they, um, they mentioned earlier that, uh, Hayden, you know, Hayden's been working on uploading consciousness. I'm pretty sure that Hayden, either Hayden is the AI or Hayden has, like, merged with it. Something like that. You can't blame me for not wanting to be connected to sending after you after a sometimes competitor. Well, so what's the real reason you're bringing in outside help? Hmm? Well, your own journalist should be able to handle digging up some dirt on a hacker. What, not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't good enough? Because I'd really like to avoid that. And look, you've covered culture wars, you know. My journalists are good, but they're mostly good at digging up leads on new gadgets and implants. Making sure they don't stack too many stims, remembering what they did at raves for the after-party report. They're not experienced enough at real investigative journalism, don't have the right contacts. The fact is my network my network admin recommended to you, it means you probably do know the right people. Is that enough ego polishing for you, or should I go on? That's it for now. I'll get back to you if I have more questions. No, don't bother. In hindsight, I probably should have been more circumspect about speaking with you. Plausible deniability and all that. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write, but do remember you got in contact with me not even secondhand, but thirdhand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge, or whatever. If you need anything else, have your person get in touch with my person. Don't come here directly. <laughs> oh, 
god, Umbra just made the worst possible pun. So I said that Hayden is around, but he might just be the AI. And Umbra said, so you're saying he's Hayden in plain sight? Get out of here. The worst. Okay. Well, that was certainly more confrontational than I'd have expected, considering she was the one needing help. She never brought you that water, either. Hey, what a jerk. Is it always like this, Skinny? Without lies, there wouldn't be much to write about. Very true. I will admit I'm interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. If all this is really due to someone manipulating the mesh net on the inside, it may give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden once and for all. That said, I'll take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating, lest we lead ourselves down a false path. Anyway, it seems like our next step is... What's that? Oh! Oh, Jesus! Oh, boy. What the... That's Zin! What the hell happened? She was defenestrated, Skinny. That means thrown out a window. Emergency services are already on the way, and they can offer her help that we cannot. We should head back to her office and see if we can determine what happened there. Yeah, no, we want to be in her office when the police arrive. That's a great idea. Perhaps we can still dispense justice. Looks like the desk has been cleared off. Let's take a look around, but be careful not to disturb any evidence. The police will be here soon. The IK-47 unit lies still. It looks like it was destroyed mid-data appraisal. Can I take it? Don't touch it, it's still evidence. There's no putting it back together. Ah, her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her files. Best to keep your fingerprints off the keyboard. Most of this isn't very interesting. Committee reports, financials, article submissions. Oh, here we go. According to this email between Zinn and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. The admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in the writing style. Some blog posts with her head anchor Charlie Nova stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently he's a bit pompous, if in an affable way, and his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, he's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. Zinn seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever's manipulating these posts spun it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist, this Charlie fellow is the one we need to talk to. Okay, but... The flawless foliage hath fallen. Picture of a toupee is an odd thing to frame. Oh wait, that's an animal of some kind. My thermal sensors detect only a single set of lingering footprints in the end almost three feet from the window. Considering the density of the glass, I can't imagine Zin jumped from that far and managed to throw herself through the pane without help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any other thermal hotspots. You're saying no one else was in here? It doesn't look like it. We should go, Skinny. There isn't anything else here and the police are almost on scene. We can't afford to be slowed by undue suspicion. Son of a... I should have figured the two of you would be here. You just won't stay out of trouble no matter what I say, will you, Skinny? <laughs> this is a total misunderstanding. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we're merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Zinn to discuss a possible lead and found her office in a state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it! Fine. Fine. Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. But mark my words, the two of you will be answering my questions when I'm not scraping people off the pavement, you hear me? Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately and we can speak further at a later time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. Sorry, Lexi. Oh, it's the Popo. Why did you lie to Lexi? We could have told her about the articles. I do not need you to inter infer upon my motivations or highlight my duplicity. Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Zinn gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers. She can get just as well from a hard drive. Literally. Has it occurred to you that whoever threw Zinn out the window could be after the same thing we are, except to silence the story rather than get it out? Ooh, okay. I mean, that's a good point. We have little time for fooling around and must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him, too. Now, unless you have further recriminations to level at me, we must not squander the time my dishonesty brought us. 
I've highlighted the main Neo SF office for TMI Entertainment on your map. Let's go. Wow, getting bossy. Alright, let's go. Let's go to TMI. Huh. I hope some pity for me still remains considering my recent tone. Because I'm honestly not sure where we should start, Skinny. I suppose we should just ask the receptionist to point us to somebody who can answer our questions. Do you know anything about TMI Entertainment? Uh, honestly, you do have your own mesh access, yes? I'm quite certain you can handle all the casual searches you might feel like making. Wow, Turing, you're being such a dick! Why are you doing this to me? Just, like, help, please. We hardly have the time for me to blather out every bit of exposition you desire, and we can just look it up on your own. So now you decide to shut up? Quite. Pfft, little jerk. Hello, receptionist. A hybrid receptionist bobs on her heels. She's either had a long day standing or is just fidgeting. Would you like this spoiled milk? Um, we, we have our own milk here. It's good in coffee. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome to the TMI Entertainment Incorporated. Do you have an appointment? No, I have a story I'm about to break and I wanted to offer TMI an opportunity to comment. Oh, um, I guess I should send you to sympathy then. She'd be pretty mad if someone ran something without her getting a chance to comment. Go ahead and talk to her. She's on the other side of the room. Don't bother the talent, though. She, she hates that. Yeah, we're in. He's practically glowing and has people waiting on him hand and foot. Definitely the talent. Oh my god. Look at these. So check out these awesome... Check out these awesome uh, uh, character designs. Sweet, look at that. And then, uh, like this dude. Ah, uh, hello. <laughs> like he's just like it's so perfect. Good face. This one too. Whoa, those sunglasses. Woo. Hella sunglasses. Okay. Um. Let's go. Let's go talk to this guy. Nice hairdo. Hey! What are you doing bothering my people? Get over here! I thought I told Nina to cancel all my appointments for the day. I swear that girl can't find her ears with both hands. Even if she makes a damn good cup of coffee. You'd think with ears like her she wouldn't have such selective hearing. I'm... I'm sorry, are you sympathy? Nina said we should speak to you. Yes, of course I'm sympathy. Who do you think keeps the clocks running around here? So, what the hell are you doing in my building? We've been given a lead on the story that involves one of your employees, Charlie Nova. You might not have noticed, but someone's been manipulating posts going out on the net to make them more extreme against the human revolution, including articles posted by Mr. Nova. We're trying to track down the culprit, and we need to talk to Mr. Nova to hunt down further leads. You let your ROM do all the talking for you? Must be one of those new interrogation modules all the fresh meat are raving about. Huh. Look, of course I know someone's been modifying Charlie's articles. I'm in the midst of tracking them down myself. What I want to know is why I should help you snatch the scoop out from underneath me. Super hacker twists MeshNet news for personal political vendetta. The clicks basically farm themselves. We're willing to trade info with you. No, say that to Zin. Zin? Augmented eyes, Zin. What does Zin have to do with this? She's the one who gave us the lead to begin with. Then someone threw her out her office window. We figured Mr. Nova might be next. We wanted to get to him before they did. Holy shit! Well, fine. I'll let you talk to Charlie. If someone's trying to kill people over this, I'd rather be out and done with as fast as possible, even if I lose the scoop. We're on an entertainment zine here, and I'm not willing to have any of my people die for this story. Whatever, man, you can kill a person with those shades. They're, like, basically a hatchet if you hold the, just, chopping in. And I want them, though. Like, it's a, it's a shade this big. It's, like, almost his whole face. This would be fun cosplay. 
But that doesn't mean you get to stomp all over Charlie to get what you want. He's a pompous clown, but he's my pompous clown. Keep it civil, or I'll throw your ass out of here and figure this out on my own. Now, get on it. I have to make some calls. Alright, buddy. No, I'll talk to him. Fantastic! How fantastic! I just love your ROM. Not quite as stunning as mine, but still pretty grand. Very sleek, very clean, bravo. Oh, Sympathy's doing that thing where she waves at me to hurry things up. Right down to the brass tacks then, I suppose. Wait, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Charlie Nova, host of Tonight in the Stars and Star in the Stratosphere. But you already knew that, I'm sure. <laughs> what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me a little about yourself? <laughs> oh, you flatter me. Yes, you do. I can't imagine you've come all this way just to get my story, have you? After all, I've already published my very own splendid autobiography, like a Nova. <laughs> but I suppose I can give you a quick rundown, even if sympathy is giving me the stink eye. <laughs> I grew up here on the mean streets of Neo-SF, but my jocular nature and striking countenance got me scouted for a few small product advertisements. The rest is history. Now I'm the host of the largest celebrity news show on the mesh, and I could not be happier. It's all thanks to my fans, though. They're the ones who count. What, what can you tell me about TMI? Yes, any additional information on your station would be greatly appreciated. Well, I can tell you it's the best damn network on the planet. I can confirm that a hundred percent, absolutely. We put a top-notch news and entertainment, but with real heart that our competitors, they just can't match. <laughs> but if you really want to know about TMI, you need to know about sympathy. It's her pride and joy, after all. Sure, she can be a little bit acerbic, and sure, she calls me a poofy-haired oaf all the time, but you can tell she really cares, you know? Deep down. And I'm not sure if that throat-cutting gesture she's making is a signal to move on to another topic, or if it's a threat against my physical well-being. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's just move it on, huh? What next? Have you heard your stories are getting altered once they get posted to the mesh? Well, it may have come up in the last lunch meeting we had, but Sympathy just assured me it was some kind of technical glitch, and our support people were on top of it. <laughs> They're top notch, the best that money can buy. So I don't think there's anything more to say on the subject. Y you're telling me you don't know anything at all. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you're insinuating, but I'll tell you, I don't think I like it. I'm a pillar of this community, and I care deeply about our reports getting to the viewer the way they're intended. I assure you, Sympathy is on top of the situation, and with that, I'll have to bid you a good day. Alright, that's enough. Charlie has a show to get ready for, and I can't have you wasting any more of his time. He's told you everything he's going to, so get the hell out of here. If you find anything more interesting than what you got, come back and see me again. Directly this time. Oh. oh man, she looks really cheesed off now. Do, do you know how snippy she can get? I better get her coffee ready. Maybe that'll calm her down. We're very sorry if we made your day more difficult. Perhaps I could take the coffee over to Sympathy and we could try to smooth her ruffled feathers. Uh, yeah, okay, sure. What's the worst that could happen? You make her even madder? Oh. On second thought. Uh, SJC Theos, that's... That's a good catch. Uh, Theos pointed out this voice reminds me of Stan from Monkey Island. Yeah, it's, I would put it in the same family. It'll only take a minute. All right, but she takes it with plenty of milk. Oh shit. Oh shit, it might be time. I'm gonna save, hold on. Oh, I can't, all right. Obviously, everybody's on the same page here. We're gonna put the spoiled milk in it, but we can't. You can't not. Okay, let's deliver this and make amends. <laughs> I thought I told you to beat it, or do your ears just not work? Uh, 
Well, we wanted to bring you your coffee. Make sure there's no hard feelings. <laughs> I'm not petty enough to hold a grudge just because you're leaning on Charlie a little harder than I'd like. Sometimes I think the product he uses on his hair seeps into his brain. But I've got a business to run and you're mucking it up. Ugh, my stomach is killing me. Maybe those egg rolls I had earlier. I'm heading to the can and you're heading to the street. <laughs> I mean, okay. Bye. What's up, Chuck? Did you want a signed photo? <laughs> Look, Charles, we're just trying to get to the bottom of this. It's Charlie. Charlie Nova. And honestly, I'd absolutely love to help you out. Really, I just don't have the information you're looking for. Chuck, come on. I'm sure you're better informed than that, right? You're at the top of this heap. It's Charlie. And of course, I'm the leading man around here. Who said otherwise? I'm not quite certain what you think it is that I don't know, but I assure you I know it. You won't be able to trip me up that easily. If they can access your stories, what else can they get on you? Haha, <laughs> nothing! The tech guys already did an audit of my online presence and there's no evidence of any attempts at unauthorized access to any of my accounts. That's why they're having a hard time pinning down this creep. He isn't actually changing the post from inside my accounts at all. <laughs> so there you go, we're already on top of it. Nothing to worry about at all. Zin fell from her office window over this, Chaz. It's Charlie, damn it! And, wait, hold on, what? Yeah, someone tried to murder Zin. What on earth? I, uh, okay. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what I know. I didn't realize how serious this had gotten, but I, I'm glad to help. Unfortunately, I really only have conjecture to offer you. Trust me, I'd love to lay down some earth-shattering pronouncement and dazzle you with my investigative skills, but all I've got is flimsy threads at best. The thing is, all the stuff with my stories, stuff getting changed, making me look like I don't like the human revolution or whatever, it started off after I had an upgrade made to my VR uplink hardware. What kind of upgrade? The technically legal kind? Oh, thanks, Dread Sorrow. <laughs> Look, I like to have a good time at a party, alright? But sympathy keeps hammering on me for pounding my too much crash and whatnot. Nothing illegal, but she says it makes me look like shit on camera the next day. So I went to this guy I know. Everybody uses him. He's called Nonya. You know, is it Nonya business? He does great work. After one simple back alley brain surgery, bing, bang, boom! I can use an app to make my VR uplink have the same effect on my brain as the stims do, without all the nasty physical side effects. It could be a coincidence though, I'm sure. The tech guys can't find anything wrong with the uplink and they say the modifications check out. But that guy does a lot of work for the media people around here so if a bunch of posts are getting changed, maybe Nanya's the weak link. Anyway, that's it. Pretty flimsy, but I'll have my ROM pass his address to your ROM. And you can go talk to him. If he'll even see you, that is. And thanks for the help. Oh, it was no problem. No problem at all. I'm quite happy to assist in any way that I can. Just make sure you source me in your article, right? Maybe run a rough draft past me and I'll give you some quotes. I'm certain that'll help signal boost the story all the way to the stratosphere. Give it the old Charlie Nova bump. Anyhow, I really have to get back to work. You wouldn't believe how long it takes all to put all this together before a show. Let me know how it goes with the murderous hacker thing. Thanks, Chuck. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna meta this before I leave. I gotta talk to uh, this person has a portrait, so we gotta talk to them. TMI's lead cinematographer. Uh, hey there. I'm Sky. Nice to meet you. This is just my side job. For my main gig, I run a gym. Sky High Gym, right by the campus off the M. Oh, Valinus, thank you. Welcome back to the math squad. Okay, so you run a gym. He's got cool hair. He's also really cute. I'm gonna go. <laughs> Alright, well. 
Let's, uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll leave. Oh, wait, no, it's, yes, I know, sympathy, not feeling well. Let's go to the map. There we go. All right, so we're going to continue our, our, uh, our, our mystery, uh, adventure, but uh, we're going to take a short break first. So stick around. There's more, uh, queer cyberpunk action when we get back. <laughs> 